FIMWISE Cloud Conference 2020. Um, as we are increasingly having difficulties meeting each other on a personal basis, to connect our community, to connect to the crypto space, to connect to the blockchain world in general, thanks to the sponsorship of Metaverse DNA, we're now enabled to start a whole new series of connecting interesting speakers in various fields and make sure that we have connectivity. Um, I would say common goal, many interesting subjects to share. Today's cloud conference has some very interesting speakers who have complementary fields. They have some things in common. All of them have entrepreneurial views. All of them are interested beyond just blockchain, but major impact of blockchain on society, sustainable development goals, but also building uh, new businesses and advancing the future of blockchains in general. We focus on decentralized um, finance today. So I want to introduce you to our sponsor representative of uh, Metaverse DNA. It's Eric Yu. Uh, Eric, would you please come on? He's the CEO of Metaverse DNA. And like all the other speakers, he was a very, very early adapter of blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies in general. He's a lifetime member of the blockchain uh, with the Bitcoin Foundation. He is an entrepreneur. He started many, many companies. And today he's actually here, I would say, as a representative of Youth Incorporation, who's now uh, doing a, I would say, a revolutionary project uh, by launching the first dual chain uh, as Metaverse DNA. So, Eric, most welcome. Uh, you're going to talk to us today about digital identity in connection with decentralized finance. So, I'm leaving the floor to you. And um, please go ahead. Thank you, Annemikia. Thank you. Right, good day, everyone. Okay. Good day, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, to be on this uh, uh, unprecedented uh, Finwise Car Conference. Uh, May 2020. Uh, Thingwise was uh, a brand named conference. It started 2017, uh, I think it's uh, July. Uh, the first Thingwise was in Shanghai. It was a major event. This this Thingwise actually is the seventh Thingwise ever. We actually planned to have this Thingwise uh, as a local event in Toronto, but uh, everybody know this is this new pandemic thing, COVID-19 pandemic made this not possible, but it actually bring us a new, into a new reality that a cloud conference, a cloud, cloud-based uh, thing wise become interesting. So um, I'm honored to uh, be able to speak to you uh, through this thing wise uh, cloud conference. Mm. Okay. Last year, uh, it was, Almost a year ago, actually, uh, one day uh, uh, over one year ago, it was May 2028, 2019, that I announced Metaverse DNA project in Finwise uh, Conference, Hong Kong. It was whole year uh, till today. We actually made a lot of progress on this project. We had um, eight run of supernode voting already conducted and uh, i think the last supernode voting was 12 billion votes casted uh, for 23 supernodes and we have a community community of 353,000 and strong and hopefully we will hit half million mark very soon uh, so we have a very strong community and uh, the dna project grow strong and grow fast. And we have research centers in North America, um, Europe, and Asia. Uh, we have a large uh, Toronto-based office and research center, and we have Shanghai office, and we're newly opening a Shenzhen office as well. And also we have uh, Hu Jiming City, Vietnam, office opening um, a couple of months back. So DNA project for the past year, since we announced a year ago, 
grow really, really strong. And also DNA token was listed on more than a dozen exchanges, including big names like uh, Bittrex, uh, ZB.com and Beaky.com. Yesterday, we got listed on OKEX that actually marked a major mar milestone for us. Uh, this is very, very important. And our market cap hit all time high to 200 million US dollar in March. But now we, we still we're over a hundred million dollar mark in terms of market cap. So <laughs> that being said, I, I'm extremely, extremely pleased for these development. Um, and uh, looking forward, our DNA mainnet will be launched very, very soon. And uh, we are actually uh, testing them. We got, I'm going to announce 10 testing nodes um, this, this week, actually probably today. Um, and other features like um, decentralized exchange and smart contract platform will be, will be followed uh, late this year. So a lot of development, a lot of development. So before my speech, I actually want to give you a, a state of uh, metaverse speech that telling everybody that we are doing really strong here. Um, okay. So the next thing I want to say is it's rather a strange time for us. Start of this year, um, everything looks normal and all of a sudden, COVID-19 pandemic hit. Um, starting from uh, January 23rd, uh, China start to lock down and followed by North Korea, sorry, South Korea and Singapore and other Asian countries. Then in February, Italy and Europe followed. Uh, United States and Canada didn't lock down until mid-March, but I think by now, everyone had experienced the, the life of lockdown, stay home, work from home, study from home. It, it is very strange to say, to, say the, to, say, to say the least. So we probably had an experience, an experiment that we are entering a new digital life, digital living. Um, we, Browse uh, Amazon instead of uh, go to local stores, supermarkets. We watch Netflix instead of go to bar and drink with friends. So things changed. Uh, I'm in Canada and it was my first time that experienced the net network, network uh, latency. The internet in Canada was extremely good, but imagine like 9 a.m. 9 a.m. in the morning, I'm, a, I'm on a conference call and my wife is watching Netflix and the two kids are, are opening their online courses. That means in my house, household, we have four internet streaming connection. <laughs> so this is really, really new. We have a slow internet and everything is new, but But can you see, we actually, we actually move a lot of activity from outside to inside, from offline to online. So basically look uh, the, uh, the stores, a lot of uh, supermarkets and a lot of uh, department store actually closed down. Macy's is do doing ter terribly and Target are doing terribly. But look, what, what happened to, uh, what happened to uh, Amazon? Amazon was doing great. Amazon stock actually created all time high um, a few days ago and it recovered, recovered all the loss during the pandemic uh, stock, stock market crash. And uh, if you look, Google, they are doing even, they are doing even better. The, the searches are crazy and people getting information not from newspaper anymore, they're getting from online. So the, the digital living, we, the pandemic actually pushed us into a new digital 
living experiment. Interestingly, all these technologies that technology that we are using right now are ready five years ago, but we are not pushed to this limit. Say you, we have to enter into this kind of new digital living, but now we are like testing the testing it in full force, and probably that will be our new reality. We're, there's no normal to go back to. We are going to do things digitally from now on. Um, interestingly, interest, interestingly, um, the, the te technology that we are actually using, we used to call FinTech, financial technologies, AI, blockchain, cloud computing, data technology, and Internet of Things. And, you know, there are new clashes between the old and the new. Um, look at this. Donald Trump tweeted a few days ago, says, uh, the mail-in ballots, and they're criticizing the social media, criticizing the mail-in vote. What's important is we are actually giving a lot of data online. We're accumulating a lot of data online. Who's actually collecting these data? Who's actually collecting this data? Amazon did. Amazon does. Google does. Facebook and also Twitter. So these companies are actually making a lot of money from the data we gave them. We as consumer, we gave them the data and they make money out of us. And interestingly, they have an opinion of the data we gave them. That's why Donald Trump is, uh, President Trump are not very happy about this, right? And the other thing is they are making money off the data that we gave to them. And the data ownership are very important before, we have digital identities create through their service. Like we have Facebook uh, accounts, that's our digital identity. Uh, we have Twitter account, that's our digital identity with Twitter. So what I'm saying that we need to use a new type, new form of digital identity that is decentralized, blockchain based, and crypto cryptographically insured and secured by the technology that own, actually owned by us. So the data ownership, the data provenance are very, very important. Uh, I, I, see, I see a lot of people actually talk about blockchain uh, provenance, meaning the, this merchandise is belong to whom? The origin of this particular merchandise. But what I think is more importantly, data provenance is probably more important because data is the new gold in our century. Look, look the uh, the company I just mentioned, Amazon, Google, Twitter, Facebook, they are actually valued in the billions of dollars, right? How they make money? Actually, they make money out of the data that we sent to them. So that's very important. The other thing is using this digital identity, the blockchain digital identity, we can have a lot of things that uh, owned by us, it not actually owned by Facebook or Twitter. So a lot of digital assets, digital dollars or bitcoins or, or digital art can be owned by your own blockchain based digital identities. Now there's a movement of uh, non-fungible token. We're talking about uh, digital art, we're talking about uh, digital uh, intellectual property that those can be owned by your own digital identity. That's very important. Um, I'll give you another example that what, where the digital identity actually can help in the real life. Um, I think everybody know that uh, US and Canada actually giving out a stimulus uh, package. Everybody get a check mailed in, right? So. It's actually a tremendous 
really um, cumbersome work. It takes a lot of effort to give everybody a check of two thousand dollars. So in U.S., they have to actually needs to go through the Internal Revenue Services to give everyone a check. I was told that uh, the last check will be mailed out, verified, and mailed out by mid July. I mean, by by mid July, <laughs> a lot of people probably already very hungry. I wouldn't say starving. Yeah, very hungry. And the, the most hard to find person are probably mostly need need that particular two thousand dollars. So, if you you if you have a digital identity and digital currency, don't you think it would be such an easy job to do that to give everyone a a universal benefit, a universal cash deposit? That would be so easy. And the other thing, if you look this particular tweet that Trump made, he actually calling a mail-in ballot problematic. So online voting, it's probably gonna be a new reality very, very soon. I don't know, maybe there will be a second wave or maybe not, but a lot of people will not be able to go out and vote in this particular November uh, uh, presidential election. It's gonna be hard. So. This is what I tweeted to uh, Donald Trump, President Donald Trump. I hope you see it. Use blockchain digital identity solution to solve this issue. You can use digital identity to vote. It is actually a very thought, thought out uh, solution. Use this cryptographic in, uh, in way of uh, uh, new voting. It actually used cryptography to ensure you have you are a US citizen and you have your unalienable rights to vote in this pre presidential election. And also also second thing is also very important that no matter how much you love or hate President Trump, you will be only be able to cast one vote for Trump or for Biden. <laughs> no, no to two votes. So that solved the problem for Trump's say mail-in ballot problem, right? So I think uh, blockchain de decentralized identity solution will become the bedrock of our new digital living. That being said, again, back to the project we're having, Metaverse DNA. Metaverse DNA will provide digital identity solution. I hope President Trump will hear this and, you know, or any, for that matter, any democratic country, they want to, you know, this kind of solution. Do contact us. That's a joke. <laughs> anyway, that would be my talk. Thank you very much. I'll return this uh, back to Anamikia. Thank you, Eric. That was an inspirational insight into, I would say, a flow of technology over the past four or five years, which is you know, tremendously speeded up over this last pandemic. It was, I think, very interesting to hear you refer to technologies already so long actually within our reach that we have not really, I would say, put its maximum use. And now, due to this pandemic, there's a positive upside to it, I think. And that is that we actually are, I wouldn't say forced, but I would say invited or seduced to using them to the maximum ability that they have. Uh, 